Shalom, Shalom, it's the brother Kadash. We're going to start off by giving our praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekha Kadash. Double honors to all the brothers and it's true. So bear with me, I'm going to try to get through this, you know. This is like something I've been catching on to with the whole feminist thing that's going on in the world. And it relates back to the Bible because it relates back to exactly what happened. This goes all the way back to Adam and Eve and the serpent in the garden, you know. And you could kind of see Esau's plans because remember... Revelation it speaks of the old serpent, the devil, and everything. I believe that's Revelation chapter 12. So let me grab that real quick. It's all that same spirit, you know, same spirit that went into Cain, the same spirit that was born back into Esau. So Esau today is trying to do the same thing that that old serpent did in the Garden of Eve. I mean, the Garden of Edom. You know, this is Revelation chapter 12. Um, Eden. Um, let me make sure I get my words right. But this is Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. It says, And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil in Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. We know that devil just means deceiver, and you know, that and the old serpent that deceiveth the world. So Esau is deceiving the world today. He went around, he, you know, he, if you type in Jesus, what image popped up? He told everybody the Lord looked that way. You type in God on Google, what image pop up? He told everybody God looked that way. He told everybody that, you know, this was the land of the free. It was just all deception, you know, and it's the same thing that the serpent did too, which was all deception. But now you kind of see, you know, trying to figure out the right words. That's why I'm kind of stumbling on my words. I'm trying to figure out the right words to put this uh, lesson into but i've been meditating on this for a while that um how all these movies now a lot of brothers we like to watch these different um superhero movies because we know that brothers are going to get spiritual power kind of like how peter was able to walk on water for a little bit um you know spiritual power that king david had that samson had in judges you know that yahweh shy had he was able to command the elements to do what he wanted them to do you know, so we know that we're going to get those spiritual powers if we be the man of the elect, you know, pursuant to um, um, yeah, how is shy having them, you know, which I believe is uh, it might be first first John, first John chapter three or second John chapter three. We're going to be just like how is shy, you know, we're going to be, be made just like him. We're going to get those spiritual powers, too. And we're going to get those uh, spiritual bodies first uh, Corinthians chapter 15. But what's on your screen right now? This is the Justice League. Now, I haven't watched this yet, but I'm about to go watch it. But even before I could watch it, the first thing I seen was this um, covering. And I seen how they got Wonder Woman in the middle. So I've been seeing this trend and I'm going to go through some other some other um, movies like this because, you know, we be into watching these movies because of the spiritual powers and stuff like that. And some other movies I um, watched too, and I seen this same trend. Just so you, just so you know, I'm not bugging. I'm gonna go to go and show you more examples. But they had Wonder Woman in the middle, and first thing I said, I said, man, I hope this ain't on some feminist stuff, because the last big movie has been pushing the woman over the man very, very hard. And why are they pushing the woman over the man? Well, in order to take the power from a nation you have to give the power to you have to take the power from their men but how do you take the power from their men by you give the power to their women so therefore like right now we got child support we got um the woman you know pretty much you could call 911 you know you could kind of um um live off the government esau becomes your man the government becomes your man so you don't really need a man they exalt the woman over the man give the woman more power over the man therefore there's no leaders that could lead the nation therefore you take the power away from a nation so they've been pushing this whole woman thing we just seen at the grammys you know um megan the stallion she won a grammy over um over um a whole bunch of rap artists men that clearly had bigger songs than her but you know they pushing the whole woman thing i mean just look at hip-hop in the whole you know, it used to be a man's sport, but now it's like the biggest artists in, in hip-hop now are women. You know, Mag Thee Stallion, um, Cardi B, you know, um, all these women that's coming up. So it kind of, it's kind of showing you what they're pushing. So I haven't seen this movie, so I can't talk about it um, fully. 
but I'm about to watch it, but I already see something. They got Wonder Woman in the middle, and I guarantee during this whole movie, she's going to be one of the main strongest characters that do something that saves them all or something like that. And the bad guy that they got playing in this movie, I guarantee that it's going to be a play on Yahweh Shai coming back, and they're going to have to save the world from Yahweh Shai, but that's what Esau thinks in his mind. Now, I was watching Apocalypse, the X-Men, so this is a whole different... Um, they might be on the same platform. Um, I think they're Marvel. They might be Marvel. I hope, hope, hopefully I'm not wrong to be corrected, but it says Apocalypse. So y'all remember the movie X-Men Apocalypse. Now I don't, I'm not saying that Phoenix, the woman Phoenix is who killed Apocalypse, but Apocalypse was going to win. He was going to defeat them until the woman Phoenix, she went up there and she did something crazy that changed the whole game. And then they were able to overcome Apocalypse, which Apocalypse was um a play on Yahweh Shai coming back. That's that was a play on that, but they feel like like a phoenix raising out the fire. They know that all hell's gonna break loose on earth, but they wanna raise out the fire like a phoenix and they think that, you know, they're gonna have a civilization of the elite that's gonna survive and um but it's not gonna happen. You know, Revelations twelve that I just got on reading clearly tells you that they're gonna be destroyed, you know. But they know that this way of life is going to be destroyed, but they just feel like they could subdue Yahweh Shai and then rebuild it. But it's not going to happen. Let me jump back to Revelations chapter 12 anyway to get a better, a better input on that. Revelations chapter 12, verse 7. And, after, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Esau, his military jets, fighting against the Lord and so-called UFOs with the world called UFOs today in the heavens. It speaks about that in Second Address chapter thirteen. That's how we know it's actually talking about these different ships, because in Second Address um, chapter thirteen, it breaks it down more. It says, "And prevailed not; neither was their place found any more in heaven." So they're not going to prevail. You know, they're going to be destroyed, but they think that they are. You know, that's why you got your whole space force thing going on because they're trying to get ready to fight against the lord in the heavens once he come comes back but this right here says the phoenix force as a fundamental power of the universe would easily um would be easily able to burn apocalypse away so what happened was um i typed in who who um killed apocalypse and x-men and it was um phoenix the woman phoenix this is a picture of her right here so this is a picture of the woman phoenix and the um what she had did this is actually from the movie apocalypse and she had destroyed apocalypse now that apocalypse is a play on yahweh shai because what is yahweh shai coming back to do judge the world and then the second death is going to happen where where a lot of people are going to be destroyed so in, in a sense to esau and his world it's like yahweh shai is coming back as apocalypse to his world but to the elect to the righteous we're rejoicing when yahweh shai come back because we know the kingdom comes after you know but um moving on so so you know you got justice league you got x-men um and these and the reason why i'm going through these movies because these are like the biggest movies when these superhero movies come out they outsell and they're bigger than any other type of movies you know so that what does what does that mean that mean that a lot of people watch these movies um star wars i used to like watching star wars i can't even watch star wars no more because as y'all know if you are a fan of star wars you know that lately the main strongest character now back in the day you used to have luke skywalker stuff like that you had darth vader on on the scene stuff like that but now the strongest and the most important the primary character is this woman right here called um i think her name's called rai or something like that star wars but you see that she's the top jedi you know these other guys on the screen they can't um weld the Jedi sword. They're not Jedi's. They're just a part of her team. But she's the actual Jedi, you know. So I think she was like the last Jedi. So now she's the main character, the strongest character, because um um when her um grandfather, which is Palatine, which is the strongest um um Sith, he's the strongest um bad guy in this sense, right? And what is and what is he trying to do? He's trying to do basically well exactly what they're saying Yahweh Shai is going to come back and do what the Bible says Yahweh Shai is going to come back to do. He's trying to destroy the world. In a sense, when Yahweh Shai comes back, looking at it from Esau's perspective, he's going to look at it as Yahweh Shai is trying to do, um, destroy the world. Why? Because Yahweh Shai is coming back to destroy his world. 
look, here it is in Daniel 2. Let me back that up. So we not just talking. That's why I said bear with me, you know. Bear with me because I'm going to try to make sure I um, get this right. But to make sure we're not just talking, we prove everything that we're saying, right? This is... Man. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. And in that day, in, in, in the day of these kings, shall God of heaven set up a kingdom. So the kingdom of heaven will be set up, which should never be destroyed. And the kingdom should not be left to other people, but it should break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it should stand forever. So when the Lord comes back and set up his kingdom, what does that mean for Esau kingdom? What does that mean for America, China, Russia? They're going to be broken pieces and consumed, you know? So therefore, yeah, it's like an apocalypse to them. It's like like a Sith trying to take over the world to them, you know. Uh, but it says in the last Jedi, he killed Supreme Leader um, Snoop, um, proving that Cal is the heir to the Sith. Finally, in the rise of Skywalker, which was the last one, we went into Sith essence transformed. Man, they got some weird words here. But Ray doesn't scumble to her grandfather's plan. This prompted the um not unreasonable question but since ray kills palatine so he, so she was actually his granddaughter and he wanted her to come to the dark side but she didn't fall for it and then she ended up killing him so it just goes to show you how ray a woman was something that used to be a man's thing ray a woman she's on top just like you've seen in um x-men just like we probably gonna see here in justice league you know so it's showing you a trend why in all the biggest movies, these biggest superhero movies, the predominant figure, the strongest warrior now is a woman. And and it's not like it's just happening in one of these. I'm showing you a trend to show you that it's happening in all these different things because it's a push for that right now. And like I said, in hip hop, there's a push for it. You know, um, you got the whole thing, the vice president, women are getting even closer and, and they trying to become, you know, have the first woman president. There's like a big push for it. But this is um right here. This is um from um Avengers. Yeah, Avengers. Now Thanos, you now we all know Thanos was a play on Yahweh Shai too, who the world calls Jesus, but the Lord coming back. Thanos was a play on that because he snapped his finger and two thirds of be um two thirds of the population to be wiped away. We know two thirds of Israelite is gonna be um led to the slaughter and wiped away because they wicked. And you know it just shows you that Thanos was coming back to judge the world, but the Avengers came together to save the world that they had. Thanos wasn't coming to just destroy all life. No, he was coming to destroy the way the world was now, but they didn't want that. The same thing with Esau now. He don't want his world to be destroyed, you know, so he's going to fight against the Lord just like the Avengers fought against Thanos. So they put in their heart's desires in these movies. Now, you got to remember, these movies are big time movies. These is not small budget movies. These are millions and millions, tens and tens, sometimes a hundred of millions. It takes hundreds of millions of dollars to make this one movie. So this is something that Esau is putting his heart's desires into, you know, but this is, um, I type in the strongest character in, um, Avengers, which is came out to a woman. I mean, surprise, surprise. Right. So I'm showing you the trend, um, Captain Marvel. I think Captain Marvel was in this, um, in the last of when, um, Thanos got killed. I believe the bad guys was winning, right? No, um, yeah, Thanos, they was considered the bad guys. They were winning, you know, um, the Avengers put up a fight. It kept going back and forth, kind of swaying it. But then it seemed like Thanos and his side was going to win. But then at the end, a woman had came, a, a, a Avenger, but she happened to be a woman. She came with super strong power and she destroyed the ship. Because remember, Thanos had this gigantic chariot, this gigantic ship behind him, just like Yahweh Shai is coming on the ship, 2nd Edgers chapter 13, on a gigantic chariot. Thanos had one and it was shooting out these these um blasts, these lasers, and, and and they was winning because of that ship. She came and she destroyed the ship and saved the day. Now I know Thanos, he probably actually got killed by um some of the other Avengers coming together and killing Thanos, you know. And I think uh Captain um I think Iron Man had got the um glove, he had snapped his finger. But the only reason why they were able to get to that point was because this woman came and she destroyed the ship and she saved the day. 
you know, which is just another, which is just, you know, that's why I'm making this video is just to show you the link, just to show you the connection. So this is something that's been bugging me because every time I sit down and watch these movies, it's always some feminist stuff. I'm like, dang, really? So now a woman, the strongest character in this? Man, I hope they just don't do it with Blade. That's all I'm asking for. Don't do it with Blade. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, the next Blade will come out and it'd be like his daughter or something like that. Crazy stuff, you know? Um, and then, of course, you know, the last big movie coming to America, which was a huge movie, too, that had a huge budget, too. Hundred, hundreds of millions of dollars budget. Um, well, we all know what happened there. You know, you had the king die, passed it on to his son. You know, generations before that king had died, they had always passed it on to the male, a male heir. And what happened? Well, we had him pass it down to his daughter, which is a woman, to sit on the throne after him. Instead, instead of passing it down to his son. We was very disappointed by that. But it just goes to show you, it just goes to show you um, the trend. So I went to, through like, what, four, one, um, two three four about five five different gigantic huge movies right five huge movies to kind of show you that trend that's been going on but this is genesis chapter three so let's show you out the bible how this goes back to adam and eve like i said in the beginning verse one it says now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said unto the woman he said unto the woman yeah, has God said, ye should not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the of the trees of the garden. Right. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So the serpent knew the serpent couldn't come against Adam, you know can't come against the man so how did the serpent get power the serpent came to the woman and tried to exalt the woman over try to exalt eve over adam by giving eve this you know supreme knowledge which is it's gonna break it down which is the same thing like to take like today you know um esau same spirit you know that same old spirit that old serpent spirit is trying to set our woman above us in order to take power from the man so we can never rise it says, um, and by the way, you know, you know, um, with the whole Black Lives Matter thing, you know, who who do you have at the forefront of that? Out of all the strong men we got, who's at the forefront of that? Well, you know, <laughs> you know, um, but it says, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. So he told the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God does not know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And isn't that what they pushing today? The whole Kemet thing? Wom woman is God. God is a woman. Ariana Grande came out with a song called God is a Woman. That's the whole thing they're pushing. So he's saying this to the woman like you you should be as a God. It was just the same thing as the Kemet thing today. They, they say, look, woman is God. Completely wickedness, man. And, um, you know, so he telling them something. And now, now she should take her husband word, Adam, and she should take the Lord's word, but she going to listen to the serpent. You know what I mean? So it's crazy. And that's what the, and it's like into today. That's why they're pushing the woman so hard over the man because they could get, they could control the woman and what they could use. They could use the woman to control the man. It says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband, um, unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So she was deceived. Now the thing is, is like, like I said with the whole hip hop thing, Mag the Stallion, they pushing these women so hard. They giving these women benefit. They telling these women you could be great. They telling these women you don't need a man. You know, you got Kevin Samuels out there fighting a hard battle to try to reverse this. The Lord put the spirit on him, I believe, you know, but these women on a pedestal, you know, 
they could go to Esau for things. They could go to the government so they don't have to go to a man directly, you know, so they feel like they could live on their own. They could be equal. They could be better than men. You know, they feel like um, they being exalted by the um, Esau now, you know, but it's a reason why Esau is doing this. You got to understand there's a plan behind it. You know, and ever since we've been living this way, we've been losing our families. We've been losing our power. We've been losing our order. Verse seven, it says in the eyes of them, both were open and they knew that they were naked, you know, and they um, so it shows you that the tree that they were eating of was knowledge. You know, it, it wasn't like an actual tree. It was they ate of the knowledge. You know, they, they got that forbidden knowledge. Um, it says in the eyes of them, both were open and they knew, see knowledge, right? That they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves um, aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden and in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees um, of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where are, are thou? Right? He called unto Adam because we have order. The man over the woman, you know, um, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Right. So and it's the same thing. Like if the Lord, if you got a household, you know, you got a husband, a wife and the Lord's going to go deal with the man and the man has to has to have his household in order. That's how it works. It's, it's an order to this thing. But women don't want to go along with that order. They want to be over their man, you know. And it says, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? So the Lord already knew, you know, so the serpent lied and, told, and the serpent fooled them because the Lord was going to find out either way. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should have not eat? And the man said, the woman who thou gave it to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Right, because she gave him of the tree and he ate, you know. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is is this that thou hast done? So now he talked to the woman, like, because the woman did it, you know. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat, right. So the serpent came to the woman and beguiled the woman. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all beasts of the field. And upon thy belly shall thou go, and the dust shall thou eat all thy days of thy life. But I'm going to leave it there because I'm not going to get all the way through it. It's going to keep going and keep going. But, you know, pretty much they all got cursed because of that. Now, this is in... Um, let me find that. The keys to the Ecclesiasticus um, 25 verse 24 says of the woman came the beginning of sin and through her we all die right because it goes back to the Adam and Eve thing the woman was deceived so even all the way in Ecclesiasticus is still giving the woman credit for the beginning of sin and through her we all die so that's why they push the woman above us because remember Esau's goal is to keep us in sin when we're in sin, when we're in sin, they could overcome us. You know, when we're not in sin, we have the Lord with us and nothing could stand up against us. So Esau's goal is to keep us in sin. So therefore, what do he do? He keep us women over or woman over us. Therefore, sin could continue because he could deceive and control the woman. You see what I'm saying? So if he put the woman and the woman have power over or the man, then that's going to take the power away from the nation and the Esau's to keep us a sin therefore he's going to stay on top so that's the goal so that's just a little trend that i've been seeing with a lot of these movies so i just thought that it you know, was about time that i actually break it down and go into it and make a video hopefully this has been edifying i want to say shalom and salvation to the elect